how meticulous was the planning for the Trump administration declared uh, May 1st uh, withdrawal? Well, thank you, Congressman. Uh, we, uh, we inherited a deadline. We did not inherit a plan. So <laughs> no, uh, no plan at all. Uh, it's amazing that it wasn't much, much worse. That is Congressman Sherman giggling and him, uh, Anthony Blinken, thanking him for the easy question because it gives him an opportunity to blame Trump for what happened in Afghanistan. But nothing could be further than the truth. And the new re- truth and, and the new reports back that up. It turns out that they were trying to warn President Biden, not some right wing group about what could happen in Afghanistan if we leave. But the guy named Anthony Blinken said our allies are concerned at a NATO summit in Brussels. He called him back. Biden doesn't budge. General Miller and tells armed services that he had many talks with Joe Biden about the danger and how quick the Taliban government could fall to keep, please, keep 2,500 troops. He did not listen. General Austin, now Secretary of Defense Austin, similar urgings, did not listen. But you still want to use every opportunity to insincerely blame Donald Trump. Senator John Barrasso, Senator Barrasso, does it surprise you that Blinken, Austin, Milley, and Miller were all trying to tell him not to do what he did? This says a lot about Joe Biden and Joe Biden's willingness to ignore the best advice. He got it also from his national security team, but he always feels that he's the smartest guy in the room, knows all the answers, and uh, he kind of damned the torpedoes full speed ahead. And he has put us in a very, very dangerous place as a nation, he's put our men and women in uniform around the world in nation. He ha- our, our friends around the world are furious, and uh, they're enraged by all this. But we have a very emboldened enemy, not just in Afghanistan, which is now going to be a magnet for terrorists, but also like, people can smell weakness. Russia is up. China is up. North Korea. I think we're going to see this in a number of places. Uh, Iran. All of those folks, I believe, are going to push against President Biden, who is weak. He is wobbly. And um, he really he called this an extraordinary, extraordinarily successful that it's dishonest that for him it may be delusional. He's got 42 percent approval rating now, despite a media that just looks the other way. I'm looking at footage. I don't want to get off topic too much, but I'm looking at footage now of 7000 people. I think it's more. Underneath the bridge yesterday at our southern border, we welcomed, unwelcomed, 207,000. They think 100,000 got away at our border last month, in a month in which everything's usually slower. And it's up 300 percent year to date. And the media doesn't want to report that. They want to move on from Afghanistan. They want to talk about Trump and these sensationalistic uh, um, stories. And he's still got 42 percent approval rating. But I just find it astounding That in Brussels, Blinken uh, called up Biden and he starts, he said, he goes, uh, he said, I called the president from Brussels after hearing concerns from NATO ministers in a March meeting. According to the book, the new recommendation was to extend the mission, this according to our allies, with the U.S. troops Mm -hmm. for a while to see if we could yield a political settlement by time for negotiations. And he said no. But what did he what did he say to you almost every time? It's Trump's fault. He put together a plan, and we pushed back that deadline, but that's as much as we could do. Well, you have a couple of things there, because you started with the the border as well. I I have an op-ed on foxnews.com about Biden and Democrats being the party of chaos. Afghanistan is the thing that really people are focused on in the drop in the poll numbers for the president. But you talk about chaos at the border, loss of national security because of the border not being secure. People are getting clobbered by inflation prices, paying more for gas and groceries. You see crime in the cities going up. All of these things show a party out of control led by a president who really uh, is not fit at this point. Based on what I saw in Afghanistan, there's been a dereliction of duty on his part, uh, not fit for office. True. Now, uh, what does it do for how you take Anthony Blinken down, knowing that he was he was urging the president to listen to NATO and back off on the deadline. He never indicated that at all to you. No, he had, you know, and several things have happened. One is they, they say they're trying to blame President Trump, but they've reversed a number of very successful President Trump policies, like the Remain in Mexico policy. They reversed and went back into the World Health Organization, which we know is complicit with China when it came to coronavirus. They they. they They've caused inflation in gas prices, 
by basically killing the Keystone XL pipeline, things that any, things that President Trump was for, they were against. They're back in the, pres, in the Paris Climate Agreement. So they could have very wisely said, look, let us think about this whole plan and the timeline. You know, Blinken told us, no, he was on this timeline. We still don't know how many people are trapped behind enemy lines in Afghanistan. Uh, we can't get a straight answer from this White House. You know, it's the third week in August, they said there were 11,000 or more Americans still in Afghanistan. That's it was this day before President Biden said, and we're not leaving until we get every one of them out. Fast forward a couple of, to the next week, the last day in August. What did the president say? We're out, except we only got 50. We got 5,500 out. Well, if there were 11,000 the week before, they got 5,500 out. That leaves at least 5,000. Then he said, well, we got 90% out. Well, that would leave at least 600 in there. And we know that since the first of this month, as our troops have been going gone for 15 days, we only got 37 out. There are men and women of the United States, our citizens, left behind for the first time in history. We've never left anyone behind. We know they're trapped in the tarmac in a, a number on planes Masri Sharif. North of Kabul, Afghanistan. Yeah, what, eight hours by the ring road north of, north of Kabul? They can, and what did, the, what did the spokesman yesterday from the White House said? We've used every lever. Wait, aren't these the same guys that said they had leverage over the Taliban? They said they're businesslike, they're professional. These are terrorists. Yeah. It is, and they need to be designated as a foreign terrorist organization when you look at the fact that there's a $10 million price tag on the head of their man who's in charge of security, Haqqani, who just happens to have the same last name of the Haqqani Network, which is a foreign terrorist organization. Uh, these guys are the worst. So the, in China, and we that know— that applies both to the terrorist and to the Biden administration. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.